today's video, Understanding and Managing Stress Mindfully. I always think it's important to understand how we're actually wired. And then to always remember, you have the ability to rewire the brain using such skills as mindfulness. It actually helps you tap in, build mindful muscle to use the wiser parts of the brain to mindfully respond to life rather than react. When we experience an external threat or an internal worry and a concern, the part of the brain called the hypothalamus is activated, which initiates a series of nerve cells firing as well as releasing chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline into the, into the bloodstream. This combo of nerve cells activation and chemical release causes many changes in our body. Your breathing rate, your blood pressure, all increase. And energy is directed away from your digestive and immune system and move toward your muscles for that quick reflexive response or reaction. Mentally, the more wise, intelligent, and rational parts of your brain begin to shut down when they're in that fight flight. When you're in that fight flight mode, your brain scans the environment, perceives everything in its surroundings to be a threat to survive. Plain and simple, this is how we're wired. Think of it like, um, I read this someone in something that I was reading, like a thief that has entered your home and you now perceive every moment or every sound as a sign of danger. Even if the wind blows the curtains, now think in a different way. It's like once you've experienced that, that person, that, that, that thief coming into your home and, and it's after the fact, anything thereafter is almost like you're in this immediate response of taking in every noise. Now think of it in a different way. A harmless comment by a colleague is now seen as an attack. You overreact to feedback. Your thoughts become irrational. Your fear becomes a filter through which you see the world around you. Why? Because you are elevated and never come down out of that fight flight response. When we're stuck in that stress response, you can't think positively. Your thoughts are clouded. Your attentional resources are focused simply on negativity. Fear is the focus, not friendliness. And you're not able to be rational. You make short-term decisions and that have long-term consequences and choices can't be processed. So when we're in this fight flight, it's turned on and it's continuously turned on and it perceives everything from this a quick emergency response. It never comes out of it. And the reason why I bring this up is that our life has things that, that make this turn on, this, this immediate activation. We are stimulated by things on the TV. We are stimulated by things on the radio. We're stimulated also by energy around us. We feel it. If somebody cuts us off in traffic or we cut them off by accident and the next thing you know, they're flipping us a bird or you know they're, they're doing something out of anger. So as I mentioned, the stress response is hardwired in the brain and the body to protect you from physical dangers. But fortunately, the ability to reduce your stress is also hardwired. But both work unconsciously. They're both automatic. And it's so it's called the autonomic nervous system. But through mindfulness, you can learn to spot when your stress response is activated. You actually start to understand yourself. You're living in awareness of self and you're then better able to take action to reduce the stress. So there's two parts of this autonomic nervous system. There's the sympathetic nervous system, that's our stress response, fight or flight, and then the parasympathetic, which is what they call relaxation response. The 
main focus here is to activate the rest and digestive function to bring your body back into harmonious balance when it's been triggered to stress response, right? So mindfulness can assist in helping you recognize when you're in sympathetic and then to activate with techniques, mindful tools and techniques to activate the parasympathetic. The key is self-awareness. Although mindfulness is not necessarily a relaxation technique, its long-term side effects create and activate the parasympathetic to come out of that fight flight. That's why they call it relaxation response. So with mindfulness, you're taking note of when you're stressed out and you can take action. It's your responsibility for your reaction to life. You want to get, you want to engage those rational parts of the brain. So how do I recommend you do it? There's lots of ways, but one that I think is very, very helpful. I'd like us to practice here. So take a moment now with me and just find that centered space. Connect to your breath, check in with your posture and get it upright so that the breath is able to flow with ease. Your back is comfortably straight, your shoulders are down, softened. And just let go of the idea of trying to relax and instead invite the best of your ability to be calm in the mind and in the body. And just bring an attitude of acceptance and greeting yourself right where you are. I often like to just put a smile on my face, encouraging to just drop in and I imagine coming out of the sympathetic nervous system response into the parasympathetic. And I'm encouraging myself to do so with non-judgment. Curiosity, each moment is different. Each time I apply this, this different moment. And I always take a minimum of three nice, deep belly breaths. In through the nose, poof out the belly, hold it. Exhale out through the nose, feel the belly concave in. Sometimes I place my hands so I can feel the flow of my breath. Inhaling, poof the belly out, hold it, exhale everything out. And when you're ready, inhale again. And you can do it with the eyes closed, choosing a soft gaze. You're just tuning your awareness into the body and just allow your breath to return to its normal flow. And each time the mind wanders, just notice it wandering. That's part of mindfulness. And bring your attention back to what you're feeling in the body, the flow of the breath, in and out. And if a difficult emotion arises, I see you, I hear you, I honor you. And I love you just the way you are. You allow that emotion to be. But see if you can just be with that emotion, with curiosity and acceptance. And see if you can just lighten that emotion. Help it to rise to just pure acceptance in the present moment. Embracing the feeling as you're breathing, 
and anything that arises in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your bodily sensations, you're allowing all to pass through. And you're trusting that by dropping in to this parasympathetic nervous response, this activating the relaxation response, that the body can bring itself into an equanimitous state of being, a balanced state of being in this present moment. All you're reaching for right now is to be neutral and accepting and a willingness to do so. And anything else is a bonus. If you're feeling really joy-filled or peace-filled, that's awesome. But right now, you're in a contracted emotion and I'm greeting you very stressed out. Just bring yourself as best you can to a neutral, accepting what is and then trusting that the flow of breath and the observer of thoughts and the observer of your emotions and you're turning and you're accepting them all as they are, that you're able to build this sense of resilience and to be neutral and willing and accepting of what is. So that reason can come in and if I just hold this, I can begin to even maybe appreciate something, maybe invite whatever is positive in my life or optimistic or hopeful. But right now, the most important thing is coming out of that stress response and inviting a sense of inner peace, just relaxation response. And then when you're ready and you, you feel yourself coming into that uh, coherent heart rhythm, may my mind be at ease and may I be at ease with my mind is a wonderful statement. May my mind be at ease and may I be at ease with my mind. To see if you can embrace that, hold it, and set the intention that when you open the eyes, you're choosing to see from a lens a freshness, newness, allowing this moment to stand on its own. And then when you're ready, gently open those eyes and do your best to see just from a state of acceptance and neutrality. Till next time, I'm wishing you all the best, always here to support you. And if there's anything I can do to support your journey, please do reach out. Today's video is a very powerful tool it's learning how to navigate or flow with life, relinquishing the need to control. A great influencer of mine is Deepak Chopra. And he is also calls it the art of detachment. One of my favorite books is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. So it's harnessing the power of mindfully navigating because I use mindfulness as the foundation for everything in my programs and in my coaching and corporate speaking. So learning to navigate life mindfully, being aware of the present moment with non-judgment and curiosity, you learn to navigate and harness the power of flow so that you can see solution, resolution, and creative possibilities, infinite possibilities. The law of detachment states in order to acquire anything in our physical universe, you have to relinquish your attachment to it. This does not mean you give up the focused intention of goals and you don't give up your dreams and desires. Both must be felt 
and mentally focused upon in order to create that which you desire. It simply means you give up the attachment to the result. Now, this is a very powerful thing to do. See, by relinquishing your attachment to the end result, you foster an unquestioning belief in the power of flow and of your true authentic self to manifest your desires. Now, I'm going to regress just slightly here, and I want to talk about it from a different angle. Attachment. Remember, with attachment to anything comes a very strong urge to control the circumstances. Attachment is based on fear and insecurities that create the perception that's not fact that I must control it to have it come to fruition. I must control it to have the best outcome. Attachment comes only when we are attached to a, dis a distinct, specific outcome. Detachment, on the other hand, with focused intention, is then the freedom to create. Because when we're detached, it's sky is the limit not putting it in a box to create it and keeping it very rigid and tight. The sky is the limit. You've got infinite possibility. Remember, everything in life is uncertain. And life is filled with unknowns. So if you are grounded in the wisdom that uncertainty is actually the norm, you will find freedom to create anything you imagine. You have to let go of the need to control, to want everything to be certain, tap into the possibility of uncertainty, and sky's the limit. There will always be elements of uncertainty. It's a natural process of living. And in the detachment, lies the wisdom of uncertainty. And it's in this wisdom of uncertainty lies the freedom from our past. This is a direct quote from Deepak Chopra. And I just think it just delivers such potency. In detachment lies the wisdom of uncertainty. And in the wisdom of uncertainty lies the freedom from our past and from our known, which is the prison of past conditioning. And in our willingness to step into that unknown is this field of infinite possibility. We surrender to it. We trust in the flow of all things. And this is where the creative mind can tap into the field of infinite, the energy that surrounds all of us, to orchestrate this beautiful symphony and dance of the universe. I want you to think about this for a moment. When we search for security and certainty in life, we are actually attached to what we know, data, things that have occurred in the past. What's the known? Our past. The known is nothing other than constraints of past conditioning with no evolution. Uncertainty, on the other hand, is fertile ground of pure created creativity and freedom. Uncertainty means stepping into the unknown in every moment of our existence. Every moment is filled with newness and freshness. We call it in mindfulness, beginner's mind, seeing something like we're seeing it for the first time. Because in actuality, we are as this moment's never been lived. So why are we bringing something into this moment that had, you know, clouding what this brand new moment has to offer. So you're, when we foster this beginner's mind, we're opening up to the creation of something new. This does not interfere with goal setting, folks, or laser-focused intentions. 
of going in a certain direction, having certain goals, dreams, desires. But between that A starting point, B the next point, there is infinite ways of getting there. Infinite possibilities. Get out of that regimented, um, rigid thinking and get into the expansion. With uncertainty factored in, you might change direction at any moment. Pivot if you need to. Because you're not fixated on a certain result. Allow solutions to emerge by rising to an expansive viewpoint. Another term I've used a lot of times in all these videos is get out of the weeds and up on the hilltop. Now, if you need assistance in doing this, allow me to help you. I have a proven methodology that transforms lives and has been for 15 years. So I would love to assist you in really cultivating this ability to flow with life and relinquish that need to control. True detachment allows for deep involvement because of the lack of attachment to a specific outcome. The law of detachment accelerates the whole process of evolution to peak performance. When you witness the uncertainty while expectingly waiting for the, the, the solutions to emerge out of this chaos and confusion, that's harnessing the, the power of now. And this is where we get excited of something new. You get to breathe in this newness. So change the mindset of how you look at uncertainty. Instead, see it as this infinite field of possibilities. The state of alertness when you are in um, this, this uh, awareness that uncertainty is not about relinquishing our goals, but allowing to harness the power of focused intention and seize the opportunity to solve problems, rise to challenges, capitalizing on the field of infinite possibilities when we drop in and cultivate detachment, not being attached to a specific outcome, and instead choosing focused intention, but sky's the limit, infinite creativity. I would love to show you how. We want to explore how emotional triggers activate the sympathetic response in the body, the stress responder. And how can we mindfully respond to our triggers? First, remember, mindfulness teaches us to tune in to how we're feeling in our bodies, our mental state of being, our thoughts, our emotional set point, and fostering the observer role with curiosity and non-judgment. And we encourage ourselves to witness what's going on for us, physically how we are responding to external circumstances. What is my emotional set point at any given moment? What are my thoughts that I'm creating? And remember, those are thoughts influenced by our emotional current. And the body is also the best mind reader ever. So we want to tune in in this regard. This is what mindfulness teaches us to do in the present moment. So notice if you're ruminating, if you're worrying, ruminating on the past, worrying about something down the road, how much are you in this present moment? Notice how you can be in the situation, this experience that you're having, without being ruled by it. So another way of looking at it is allowing space around the experience internally and externally. So to be clear, at this point, you're not trying to change anything. You're just seeing it for what it is. You're witnessing it. 
I tell people all the time the best analogy is it's like you're watching your movie, your life movie, play out on the screen. Your movie screen. And notice how it feels when you're engaged in a movie. No, no, don't do that. Oh my God, you're going to do that. Or fear, right? This is the same kind of dynamic that we have going on in our internal world when we start tuning in to self-awareness. So another way of looking at it is allowing space around the experience. If you feel yourself emotionally attached to something, awareness is power. When you're attached, you can't gain clarity about anything. It is all up close and personal. I tell people it's like placing your hand at the tip end of your nose. All you can see is your hand. When you pull it out here, not only do you see the hand, but you see all the space around it. We want to be detached from those emotions. Now, this does not mean aloof. This does not mean not feeling. But you are not up close and personal into the emotion. You're learning to be the observer with curiosity, non-judgment of what you are feeling. There is no bad emotion. We accept that we're feeling it. We actually respond to ourselves and say, I see you. I hear you. And I love you just the way you are. You really want to respond to yourself with love and kindness that you're having this emotional experience, this emotional trigger to this experience. So to be clear, at this point, you're not really changing anything. You're seeing it for what it is, and you notice how you feel and where you feel it. Mindfulness teaches us that everything we do is by choice. Learning how to identify our personal emotional triggers is one of the most pinnacle and important steps in mindfully navigating life and choosing to respond to life instead of reacting. Habitual, unconscious reactions. So emotional triggers are consisting of our thoughts, our feelings, the event itself that seem to trigger an automatic response from us. This knee jerk, right? Our go-to. And sometimes it's unconscious. We're just going to that. We go from 90 to nothing. The word trigger is important here because the idea is that our reaction just occurs automatically. It might seem as if the emotional reaction is completely involuntary. And the truth is that this is a reaction like everything else and we have a choice. Be careful when you notice how you shouldn't have said that to me. You shouldn't have done that to me. We can't control how other people show up. But what we can control is how we show up. So be careful of that shift. It's very natural. We do it all the time. Non-judgment. But do I really, is that a fact? How can I control? How can I say, okay, you show up this way and you'll make me feel better. It's not realistic. So how do I navigate how I react or respond how can I articulate and communicate, especially with those that we're interacting on a regular basis, and we maybe need to set a boundary, we need to express ourselves, and effectively and mindfully communicate our needs. So remember that learning how to identify our personal emotional triggers is the first step to taking control of how we choose to respond to life life situations. And remember to mindfully witness what's going on internally. You're fostering a relationship with self to understand self from an emotional st standpoint, the thoughts you're creating, the bodily sensations you're experiencing. And you want to explore these with love and kindness towards yourself. And notice those that elicit an emotional trigger. What, we, we, what do we mean? Those things that don't feel good, that literally take us from zero to 100, and we can't maintain a state of peace. 
What is it? Everything in our experience is there to teach us something about ourselves. What is it that triggered that in me? That's my cue to explore mindfully so that I can learn to navigate my triggers, avoid an episode altogether, and then gracefully and with ease navigate when I am triggered so that I can learn from it. Once you increase your personal awareness of specific emotional triggers in your life, you begin the process of regulating your emotions. And this is turning those emotional reactions into emotional responses. Empowered choice. Remember, you always have a choice. So I encourage you to foster mindfulness in your daily living, tuning in to your emotions, your thoughts, your bodily sensations. I call it in my coaching program, mindful pauses, so that you can navigate, navigate with ease your emotional triggers. If you would like to learn more about how I help my clients navigate emotional triggers, learn how to avoid those episodes so that you can live a life feeling empowered, not debilitated by emotions, please do reach out and schedule your breakthrough call with me. I would love to talk further to you and explain to you the pathway to inner peace featuring the 4R method. It is my cutting edge, innovative coaching program. Till next time, all the best. I get asked quite often, what is that on your wall of your office? I had one of my clients many, many years ago paint this beautiful mural of Buddha because I love many of the quotes from Buddha, one of which that is on my wall. All that we are is the result of what we have thought. So I'd like you to think about that for a moment. Where are your thoughts? All that we are is a result of what we have thought. Do you believe you can have the life you want? Do you believe that you can be the best version of yourself? Do you can't believe you deserve the best that life has to offer? And I pose these questions because Many times, and what I've found with my clients is that they want all this, but then we always kind of hedge ourselves, back off just a hair, because maybe if I prepare for the worst or don't get my hopes up too high, then I won't be disappointed. I won't experience pain because it'll just be, well, you know, that happens to me. Well, you know, that was, a, that was a shot in the dark anyways. I challenge you instead to focus on what it is you want because guess what, folks? You can have pain either way. Why not stay in the lane of what you want to experience, shoot for the stars, shoot for that. Encourage yourself to have the courage to create a life you design instead of focusing on lack or focusing on always keeping that shoe from dropping. Maybe I don't need to take so much risk. I don't need to invest in myself. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. But all you do is rob yourself from the best possible options. Have courage in yourself, period. End of story. No excuses. 
shoot for the stars. You can be and have all that you want and be the best version of yourself. And don't rob yourself for being and shooting and having. Because even by hedging yourself or being tentative or not taking that risk or not improving self or not processing your emotions and moving through your hurts and your, and your pains in life, you only perpetuate suffering for yourself. So pain is inevitable. Those are all the challenges in life. Suffering is optional. Remember, you've heard me say this before, and it's our resistance that creates the suffering. Don't put the brakes on. Don't encourage suffering. Yes, it takes great courage to step into your area of genius. We all hear that. Or to step in to creating a life you design, not one of default, my tagline. It takes courage. But I encourage you to give yourself that courage. One of my biggest influencers is Dr. David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. And there are levels of consciousness. When we start tuning into our emotional set points and we start discovering where we are, when we are courageous or stepping into courage, we come out of those forced emotions and into the power emotions. And it helps us move up the emotional scale. Courage, willingness, I think it's, maybe it's courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason. These are all productivity and peak performance. We come into that zone. So courage leads us out of emotions that are lower. Shame, guilt, anger, grief, fear. Even pride is down there. So I encourage you to rise. Step into courage. Step into willingness and neutrality. Create an environment that you can thrive. And turn all that we are is a result of what we have thought. Align your thoughts with what you are. You are a courageous being of light. You are a beautiful divine being. Step into it. I and encourage yourself to be that which you wish to see in the world. I am the vibration of love, joy, peace. All that we are is a result of what we have thought. What are you thinking? What are you thinking about yourself? And is that what you want to think about and create in your life? Take care. Today's video, the world can make you feel shaky, pulled in multiple directions, scatterbrained. Have you ever had those moments like you're busy doing so many things, trying to get out the door and you can't find your phone, don't know what you did with your keys. When you're having that moment, what I encourage you do, to do is to stop, take a breath, anchor in to the present moment. It's because our mind is going 90 to nothing and we're not present. Be aware of the sensations in your body. Be aware of what the thoughts are and see if you can just settle. I like to think of a snow globe and you shake it and you can't see the image behind it. But once everything settles, you see the image. So simply notice what you're experiencing in the moment. Note your thoughts. Note your feelings. The, in the body as well as your emotional set point. Tune in. I like to actually feel my feet grounded and I create in my mind's eye like I'm a mighty oak tree. Take a couple of 
gentle breaths. We're not talking long here. It's all about control of self. It's about trusting that you have the ability to bring yourself into the present moment, harness the power of laser focus, and continue on with that moment. Don't get caught in overanalyzation. Just generally just tuning in, breath, feeling it flow in, feeling it flow out. Feel yourself strong in your foundation. Feel yourself rooted like your feet on the ground. Like I literally just stop. You can stop and sit down for a second and feel yourself centered, really activating that core and release any feeling of like you're blowing around in the wind or you're unsupported, being bounced around by life. Ground, feel yourself like a mighty oak tree. I'm anchored, but I'm flexible and flowing. And some beautiful sentence structures you can say is, I have a strong foundation. And feel yourself say, I have a strong foundation by which I stand tall and anchored and centered. And I am content and aware in this present moment. I also say to myself, I'm flexible and flowing in this present moment. Just a couple of nice, strong sentences so you can feel yourself building this sense of trust with self so that life doesn't feel like it's just bouncing you around and throwing you off your balance. Ground, feel yourself flexible and flowing, but rooted. I am centered. I am calm. I'm connected. Feel yourself steadfast, tall, anchored. Feel your power center. Just take a moment. And the breath is the best way to bring you into that present moment. Because what's happening is you're being pulled in multiple directions. You're not present. So anchor in, get present in this moment. Fabulous exercise. Anytime you feel scattered. Take care. Have you ever noticed that sometimes as you're laying in bed and you're trying to drift off to sleep, you can't stop thinking? You can't stop thinking about things you wish you had done during the day and didn't get to, or ruminating on conversations you had, or worrying um, about tomorrow's events or planning tomorrow's events. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you'll just say, think about the same things over and over again? So one of the practices to assist you in these moments is to practice gratitude and appreciation. The mind is designed to dwell on the negative. We call it negativity bias. And what we lack, that's natural. It's an instinct of ours. But what I really wanna encourage you is how to shift that mindset to practice gratitude and appreciation. Because when you do that, you actually are building mindful muscle to help support a calmer state of being as you fall asleep. Because naturally, the body's heart rhythms and all this chemistry, this beautiful mechanism that we have, begins to come into a harmonious state when we think of gratitude and appreciation. And as you focus on a good Feeling thought, a pleasurable experience, you help the body relax and soften. And this helps you to ease into that state of falling asleep. You're giving the mind the, the thought patterns that in this present moment, everything is a-okay. So can you think of one right now? Can we practice it? Let's try. So find that comfortable position. And if you want to lie down and practice, or if you want to sit up and just practice. 
sitting up. And I want you to think of a time that you felt really good inside. You felt deep appreciation, gratitude. See, as I think about trying to fall asleep, I love to imagine how cozy my bed is, right? I literally sink into my bed and I feel how cozy it is, how soft the sheets are, how much I love the time alone with self in the darkness to unwind and relax. I find deep comfort in the, the feeling of being in my bed. But what is it for you? It could be uh, a loved one or a pet. Appreciating each breath, each inhale and exhale. Sometimes I even imagine inhaling peace, exhaling anything that isn't aligned and encouraging all the muscles in my body to just go to blossom like flowers really releasing the tension in my body and settling a little deeper into my bed. Relaxing the belly too, kind of scan the body. Where do I hold tension and encourage it to relax and let go? Using your beautiful breath as the anchor, encourage each flow of breath to invite this deep, relaxive, peaceful feeling. As you call to mind things that you're grateful for, things that make you feel good, deep appreciation, and encouraging yourself to ease into the comfort of a good night's sleep. Encourage yourself to feel safe. And as we breathe and relax the body, feel this moment of well-being because we know that when we sleep, we give the body a chance to rejuvenate and recharge and encourage again that lightness of being, release the tension and invite just the breath and body to be in sync with a state of appreciation and kindness, bringing your awareness to not only that appreciated moment, but a moment to encourage everything to lighten up. And as you do this, you can naturally drift off to sleep. Now, the mind is designed to think and you can't expect it to suddenly stop negativity. So if you find those moments that it's trying to sneak those thoughts in, just divert it. Don't push against it, don't act like it's not welcomed, but see it and then say, but you know what? I'm reaching for a better feeling. You're training the mind all the time that no emotion is off limits. It's just that I'm trying to go to sleep now and I don't want to invite those agitated thoughts. I want to invite peaceful thoughts. So I'm not going to deal with that right now. Right now it's about falling asleep. I'll deal with that in the morning or I'll let that go. It really has no value. And bring yourself in to, again, something that feels good, that you can celebrate, that you're grateful for. And when I do that, I just fall right into sleep. I can even start by having all these thoughts and then I take control of that moment and re-divert and melt into the warmth of my bed. I love my bed, I love my bed, I love my bed. The softness of my sheets, whatever it takes to feel and put yourself in a state of deep appreciation and gratitude for that present moment. All you have to do is hold it. We know a good feeling thought when we hold it for like 20 seconds, we can really feel it on a cellular level. And that's what you're going for. So I encourage you the next time you have difficulty falling asleep, try this and let me know your thoughts. Encourage yourself and remember it takes practice. We get better at the things we practice. We get stronger and better at the things we practice.
Till next time, all the best. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to share with you one of my most uh, favorite exercises to teach my clients. It's called the mindful pause. And the purpose of the pause is to break that habit of falling into unconscious habitual reactions to life. You know, those things that you just mindlessly default to, whether you're triggered into it, whether it's just a habit, it's that thing that your brain defaults to. This mini meditation helps you turn that off. How does it do it? It brings awareness to how you feel in the body, bodily sensations, your emotions, and your thoughts in that present moment. But mindfulness teaches us also to look at it with curiosity and non-judgment. So that's what we're doing. We're just exploring before we react. So by taking this pause, you regulate your thoughts. You regulate your emotions. You actually become tuned in to what it is that your natural reaction would be and how you want to respond. And furthermore, this little mini meditation helps kind of activate that parasympathetic response. Get out of the sympathetic, that stress response, that uh, fight or flight, and you actually are using the wiser portions of the brain. Now, before we practice, this mini meditation gives you an opportunity also to just step back into that what we call observation mode. When we think of mindfulness, it's being silent witness to your own life experience. You're able to see what is actually happening instead of being enmeshed in it. So there's three steps to this mindful pause, A, B, and C. A is awareness of your body sensations, your emotions, and your thoughts. B, breath awareness. Notice how the breath is flowing in the body. And then C is connecting both the body and the breath, being aware of the whole body as the breath is flowing through it. So let's practice, shall we? Find that comfortable seated position. Feel your feet on the floor. And you can either choose to close the eyes or choose a soft gaze down. Feel your shoulders kind of back, the heart is open, and the shoulders are down. I like to rest my hands on my lap. Some like to put their palms up, whatever is comfortable for you. Now, bring your awareness in. Begin to notice how your body feels in this present moment. Gently scan, starting at the bottom of their of your feet, tips of your toes, and scan the body. Getting a blueprint of how you're feeling as you enter your stillness practice. No judgment, just observing. Breathe, tuning in. Just notice if there's any parts of the body that have tension, parts that feel fine, maybe something might hurt. You're just lovingly turning to it and seeing it for what it is. Not changing anything right now. And after scanning the body, let that gently fade Bring to mind, what am I feeling emotionally right here, right now? Am I sad? Am I tired? Maybe I'm content. And where does that emotion lie in my body? gently fade. What are 
the thoughts passing through. Now I like to imagine my thoughts as clouds just simply rolling by. Can't touch them, they're just there. This is the kind of distance we would like between our thoughts, not being all enmeshed, caught up in thought. But if it ever catches you in thought or you get caught up in a thought, you haven't failed. The mind wanders 58% of its waking time. We're training mindful muscle right now. So just step back, bring yourself back to that center point of breath and awareness. I'm not gonna think about that right now. Next, letting that fade, bring in breath awareness. Notice the breath. Notice how it's flowing. Is it smooth or is it spiked? Is it shallow or is it deep? No judgment, just observing. The mind gets caught up in a thought. Just bring it back to its breath. This is your anchor, this moment of pause. And then last, connecting both the breath and awareness of your body, emotions, and thoughts. And I like to play around with the breath. Imagine breathing it up the front of your body exhaling it down the back of your body. Really firing up all that vital life force energy in the body. And when I do it, I like deep belly breath. In and exhale, and ex inhaling and exhaling through my nose. And then close out your practice, just celebrating that you took a pause for yourself. Giving yourself this beautiful gift to be tuned into the present moment, getting out of just this mindless, unconscious awareness. And I want you to set the intention that when you open the eyes or bring the eyes up from a gaze, that you're seeing out of a fresh lens, whatever you're doing, You've got a fresh perspective. Getting out of that tape loop, if you will, especially if it's negative thinking. You've broken the cycle. Then when you're ready, set that intention to see with beginner's mind. See this moment just as it is. Brand new. And then open the eyes. Choose a focal point and expand your vision from there. I hope you enjoyed today's mindful pause. Till next time, all the best. So today I wanna to share a technique that is one of my favorites. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, um, extremely hard on yourself and you feel your inner critic getting the best of you, is a technique that um, Tara Brock, B-R-A-C-H, came up with years ago called the RAIN method. It's an acronym, R-A-I-N. And I love it for my clients when they're feeling that inner critic and that harshness getting the best of them. R stands for recognize what's going on. Awareness is power. First, you have to recognize that something is happening and occurring, that I'm caught up in the emotion of overwhelm and I'm being extremely hard on myself. 
So you've got to first recognize and then allow, A, allow it to be. Don't push against it. What does a child do when it feels like you're um, taking something away or you, they can't do it? What do they do? They, they scream and shout, right? And they throw a temper tantrum. So allow that emotion to be. Don't push against it. Just allow it, the experience to be there just as it is. Turn to that emotion, see it, hear it, feel it, allow it, and recognize that you hold the power to either experience it or let it go. And you can reach for a better feeling thought. Now, sometimes these two steps will make it just dissipate. Other times, you're going to have to investigate with kindness. Is this a pattern of my mind? Is this a fact? Have I felt this before? And is there a history behind it? What is the tone and the feeling? And is it a trigger of mine? These are all beautiful, wonderful questions to explore. And you do it with kindness and curiosity and openness to new outcomes to hear what it is you're feeling, feeling, seeing, sensing, and experiencing in that moment. And then it rolls into in. Um, now there's two different um, mindsets. There's one of nurture and one of non-identification with the experience. But non-identification is the natural awareness which comes from not identifying getting emotionally attached to what's happening. You know you've succeeded applying mindfulness to that when you no longer feel enmeshed in the emotion. And that's why I think sometimes the best thing to give ourselves is love and kindness. Nurture yourself. Like what would make you feel protected, safe, loved, seen? Um, sometimes if I'm by myself, I'll just place my hands on my heart center. And it's just like giving myself this warm hug. So I hope you'll apply the RAIN technique to yourself the next time you're feeling overwhelmed and that inner critic is getting the best of you. Till next time. So today's video, we all have daily stress and not all stressors are created equal. Not all stress is bad, right? It's not about eliminating stress. It's about managing your stress and your reaction to it. And one of the easiest ways and most effective ways of managing our own internal stress is connecting to breath. We all know this. This is nothing new. But the key is being aware and then taking action. Your breath is the only thing that you can control and it enables you to proactively affect your autonomic nervous system. So it's pretty cool that you can connect to something that's with you all the time, your breath, and decrease the sympathetic nervous system and activate the parasympathetic. So why don't we just take a moment Focus on our breath together and let me show you what I mean. So first, just bring your awareness in and notice how the breath feels right now. Are you a belly breather or a chest breather? Maybe a combination of both. Just greeting your breath right where it is. Feel it rising and falling. Feel the air passing through your nostrils. Now, let's take three nice deep breaths. Breathe as much in, really feel the expansion of your chest, your belly. Hold it. Then exhale. Preferably only out your nose, but if you need to, out the mouth, whatever's comfortable. Breathe in again. Pulling all this wonderful, wonderful breath, oxygenating yourself, oxygenating yourself. <laughs> 
Hold it. Exhale. Ah, allowing yourself to drop into this relaxation. The parasympathetic. One more. Breathe really in so it really feels good and expansive. Hold it. Exhale it. That simple. And you may notice that breathing with intention is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool and it can change your state of mind. And you can repeat this type of breathing anywhere, anytime, and you don't have to close your eyes. You can choose a soft gaze and just connect. Breathing deeply and fully is helpful in any situation, but especially during those more difficult, stress field filled moments. Till next time, all the best. Today's video is about tapping into the power within. The power I'm referring to is not a physical power, but the connection to your heart that comes from within and also the power that comes from our belly, the fire. So it's this connection in here. It's not about being aggressive. What I'm talking about is this quiet sense of power. So I sat this morning and I meditated and I asked myself, how do I define power? When I think of power, I think of intentionality and staying focused, positivity filled with gratitude and living in the present moment. These words represent power to me. How about you? What does power mean to you? Now, it's one thing to define what power is, but how about applying it in our life? Life doesn't make it easy to stay in this quiet sense of calm and connection. And life isn't always flowing with ease. Obstacles get in the way in our experience, and then we have to navigate. That's where the true power lies. How do I take that, ob that obstacle and turn it into an opportunity? You may have to change intended directions. How flexible and flowing are you to change? By turning that obstacle into an opportunity to pivot may actually lead you to something greater than you ever could have imagined. It changes the trajectory, but how fixated are you on keeping to that initial goal or that initial desire? Because when you do, you give that obstacle, power. Obstacles can be like riptides. They, they can literally pull you under. Chaos, conflict, negativity, these are types of riptides that we come in contact with. But how do you navigate, move through that riptide? What do we do? We know we don't swim against it, it just sucks us under. In order to get out from a, a riptide, you have to flow with it. You have to allow it to carry and move with it. And if we live in awareness when we need to be flexible and pivot and flow, the riptide loses its power. We gain power and are able to come ashore. We may be further down the shore. The view may be different than how we initially entered the water. These are all metaphors, but maybe it's okay that it's different, I have a different view? Or do I need to steer my ship and come back to that original point of origin? But how do we do it? We do it with awareness, connection to our power, and navigate accordingly. So today, I encourage you to tap into that inner power. What does that mean for you? How do you define it? And how can I live in awareness of when I'm giving my power to something else or stepping into my power. Have a great day. Bye for now.